Welcome to Gender A Wider Lens, exclusive content for our listener community. In these bonus episodes, we're going to dive even deeper into the issues surrounding gender in today's culture. Some weeks we'll respond to listener Q&As. And we'll also be introducing a series called Dinner Party Conversations. And here we start grappling with the difficult question, such as how do we talk to people in real life about gender? We also dive a bit deeper into topics that we touched on in the full episode. Here is the bonus conversation. Let's let's do it. So that's where we are. We're in the kitchen. We're having a conversation right before dinner. We're 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 prepping the meal. Uh, all right. So let's do it. Hey, honey. Okay. Hey, Dad. Like, you know, I I came out as trans some months ago, and you told me to give you time. I've given you time. Oh. It's it's every 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 day is pain. I need to yeah. get on puberty blockers. I feel like you're avoiding it. When we know we know that I'm a boy, we know that we just you just have to let me live my life. And I just don't understand why you're slowing things down when it's so important to me. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Well, thank. I first let me see. I I I appreciate you telling me that, and and I want to have that conversation with you. Let's have that conversation. I also want to make sure that we. We have have dinner when when my husband comes home. So let's why don't you um why don't you help out here and we'll have that conversation. Do, do me a favor, cut the tomatoes while we have the conversation, um, and then we'll we'll set the table later. So so uh, um, to, ha, who have you spoken to about this? It's, have you spoken to a counselor or anybody at school? I have spoken to you know some really good friends online, and they know an awful lot. I've I've really learned. I've done my research. I've taken it very very seriously. I've really really absorbed myself in this, and I I really yeah. know. I this believe subject. that. I believe. I yeah. I I I I believe. I believe you really you really know the subject. Let's get. Let's come back to that because I think that's that's really important. Um and and how you how are you feeling about how are you feeling about yourself. I feel that I'm really unhappy and I know what's going to make me happy. When I get on puberty blockers, I'll have started my journey and I'll be able to kind yeah. of know my path ahead. And it's it's just, I feel like I, I'm being held back. Yeah. And I, so know, just, I know you love me and you're worried, but I think you're for holding me I back for the wrong reasons. Yeah, no, no, of course, of course I love you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to just figure this out so that I can understand. So thanks for helping to clarify this so that, that I can understand. So you said you're really unhappy. What what are you unhappy about? I want to live my life as as the boy I am. And I feel like I'm living a fake life because everybody's calling me the wrong name. I I'm developing what, and I shouldn't be. What name do you want them to call you? Well, I I want them to call me Aiden, but now so many people don't take me seriously because I I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't legally transitioned and, you know, some of the teachers get it right, but some of them get it wrong and they they call me by my old name. And sometimes even you call me by the wrong pronouns. People get it wrong and that just derails me completely. When I, I know what I want, but people won't follow, you know, the, the, the guidance yeah. I give them. What, 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 so just, just so that I'm clear. So what name do you want to be called? I want to be called Aiden. But people call me Alicia, oh, nice my name. own name. Yeah. That's a nice name. But people call me my, my own name, my dead name. And they call me, you know, she, her pronouns just by accident. I know they want to they want to get it right. But so many times people get it wrong and it's it's distressing. And if I could get on puberty blockers and if, if I could kind yeah. of get it, you know, get the road clear, then I could just start living my life as the so boy me, I am. Let me, let, me, let me ask you a question. It's just, again, I thanks for your patience. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure I understand. Don't cut your off on the tomatoes um so if you had a magic wand and yeah. you wave that wand and you were suddenly a boy would all of your problems go away i don't think all of my problems would go away but i think the deep intense problem mm. would go away and i think that would free me to deal with any other problems that were in my life. Yeah, I can see that. So what's the deep, intense problem? I'm living uh, the wrong life. I, I, I should be living the life as, as, you know, as Aiden. I should be recognized as a boy. I should be perceived as a boy. And this old me is holding me back. Okay. Okay, so I think I want to repeat back to you so that I 
understand what you're talking about because I want to make sure that I understand because I love you. I want to make sure that I understand what you're talking about. So you feel that you'd be better off as a boy and that almost all but not all of your problems would go away. And if you were perceived as a boy, you would feel better about yourself. Is that... Is no, that that's did I not miss exactly. You did a little bit because oh, I'm I feel. Sorry. Thank you. I feel I'm a boy, and um, people don't realize it, and I need to help them realize it. And you help them realize it. How 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 would you help them realize it? Well, society is, you know, it's made up of kind of gender rules. So I have to get on puberty block because I have to get my name right. I have to get my pronouns right because then people will see me as the boy I am. So if you got on puberty blockers, it is, is I'm trying to figure this out. So if you got on puberty blockers, you wouldn't develop breasts. And... If you didn't have breasts, people were more likely to think of you as a boy. Is that the idea? Yeah. Do, do I have that right? The, yeah, they'd see the boy I am. Because, you know, society is made up out of gender rules, and they would more easily see the boy I am that I know okay. is inside me. Okay. So I, I, think, I, think, I, I think I'm understanding you here. Uh, so I hear you. I hear okay. you. So, so I want to I wanna talk about... I want to talk about something you said before that I said that I'd get back to that's that's important. I believe you when you said you you've you've studied this issue. Um let's let's talk about let's talk about like what does it mean to j- just so that I'm clear cuz I'm I'm trying to understand. Like let's say that I wanted to study um I don't know. Uh I know I know your your teacher Miss O'Fallon uh, has talked to you uh, uh, about uh, gentrification here in Dublin, and uh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, and I and 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 and, and, and I know, and so just 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 so that just so that I'm I'm clear, because again, I'm really really genuinely trying to understand what's yeah. going on here. Thank you. Yeah, sure, of course, of course. It's, it's, uh, I I owe that to you. I'm your father, and I love you. So just so that I'm sure I understand, like let's 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 talk about gentrification because I can kind of. It's do you understand how it could be easier for me to wrap my head around gentrification? Yeah. Okay. So when when you learn about gentrification, when you study it, like what does that mean to study gentrification? Like what what do you what does that mean? What do you, what do you well, mean by you know, that? You, you check out, you know, what your teacher tells you and then you, you, you read the books around it and you go deeper and deeper and you find out there's different um there's different analysis and you, you, you explore them all and you make sure that you've got ah. the, the, the appropriate understanding, I think. Yeah, so you expl- So what would you do if I told you that somebody I'm just, just as curious, like it, it, what if somebody only studied the fact that gentrification was was good? Then they wouldn't learn about all the poor people who were thrown out of their houses by gentrification, right? Yeah. So if you really want to study gentrification, would it be fair to say that you'd have to study the pros and cons of gentrification? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you name three people who have detransitioned and why their stories are meaningful. Can you name three people who have said that they've made a mistake? I just give me their names right now. Um, I could name you know w- w- one person who's detransitioned. Ho- hold it on, but I have read some of the stories you've shown me of the detransition. No, no. So I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm I'm asking you a very direct question. Can you give me the names of three people who have detransitioned? Um, I, I can. I can think okay, of so, three people. So if you can't give me the names, if somebody couldn't give me the names of three arguments against gentrification or four, how could that person have studied gentrification? I tell you what I can do. I can say I know sure. of three stories of detransition and I know why it doesn't apply to me. I can know okay, I do know the, those. That yeah. that's different. That's di- so so that's very different because if you don't know the names of three people who detransitioned 
it's unclear to me that you've genuinely studied the other side in the same way that if someone doesn't know the, 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 the main arguments against gentrification or climate change or for, it's unclear to me that you would know enough about the subject to say you researched it. Dab, I think this is really unfair because I watched so many detransitioners talk on YouTube and you're punishing mm -hmm. me just because I can't remember their names. One girl had really bad mental health problems and she had an eating disorder and she went to the gender clinic and she got puberty blockers after one meeting. But I'm not like her because I've been okay. feeling this way for two years. So okay. why, hold, why hold, do hold, I have to hold. know their names for me to have studied it? Okay. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out what it means. So you, you said the word, your sister said the word studied. I didn't say the word study. I'm just trying to figure out what it means if someone says that they studied something. Forget about the gender thing. Like, what does it mean if I say that I studied cl climate change? I, I tell you one thing it means. When somebody talks to me about detransition, yeah. I think that they're missing the point because I'm not the type of person who detransition. I have read enough about okay. those people. I know those people. Like Sasha said, like they're they're you know they've got eating disorders they've so okay many all right but problems. but but hold, hold hold on just i'm just i'm just trying to wrap, sweetie i love you i'm just trying to wrap my head around this forget about detransitioning what does it mean to say that somebody has studied something like if i tell you that i've studied you know i don't know electromagnetism or something or i don't even really know what yeah. that is but if, if i tell you i've studied you know like how to fly Climate a plane change. or something like or whatever like what does that mean what does it yeah. mean to say you've studied? I mean, I, that may seem like a because I'm trying to figure out because like what does that mean to say that you've studied it? It means to study. I've stu I've spent hundreds, if not thousands, of hours exploring this subject. Thousands right. of hours. What percentage of time have you spent studying the fact that detransition is good versus detransition is bad versus detrans like? How many of those hours were spent in a 50-50 looking at both sides of the issue? I've spent many hours looking at the different, you know, the difficulties it is of being a trans person. I know a lot about how, how hard That's it good. is to be a trans person. Or I know be, the yeah. road ahead is going to be, be very difficult. difficult. Yeah, be very difficult. Be very difficult. And if that's the path that you go down, I will support you in that. I just want to make sure that when you tell me that you've studied it, I just want to make sure that you've actually studied. So what I would like to do is to study it with you. I'd like to look at some people who are very happy that they've transitioned. And I'd like to take a look at those stories. And I'd like to take a look at the testimonies of people who, who are not happy. So then we can, you know, I can say that I participated. So if you decide to transition, then I will have no, I will have studied and I will know enough about it with you that we, we've made that decision together. I mean, so don't, you, don't, don't you want that? Don't, okay. You know, I mean, because so I want to be supportive. So you're saying we're studying together? Yeah. We'll, we'll, okay. How, how does that look? What will we do? Well, I don't know. We'd have to find a time. You, after you take the dog to the park, uh, we, we could come back and, and you know, we'll, we'll each be responsible for, for finding some material. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we can talk about that. But I think the most important thing now is that we – agree that we'll sit down and study it together, actually study it together. And we'll look at all sides and we'll look at okay. different voices and perspectives, male, female, female, male. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. And just one thing, do you mean so sh side by side we're studying it together or do we? Well, yeah. No, yeah. we study it together side by side so we can watch videos of people. Uh, we can read stuff. Maybe we'll, you'll give me some homework of something to read. I'll give you okay. some homework of something to read. And we can come back and we can talk about that. That's what I think we should do. Chapeau. So I think we will carry this forward for our listener community. We will break oh. down that interaction and analyze it together. Yeah. But for our main podcast audience, we'll wrap it up here. And then for everybody in our listener community, please go over there to hear us discuss this interaction with Peter. Uh, and thanks, Peter, for really showing up there. That, that wasn't easy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no, no, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, was fun. thanks. Thanks. Okay, so let's break down that interaction. There was a lot that I thought was really interesting. And as the outsider, it's a ton there. I'd like to ask you. It's a you, ton there. Tons. I mean, tons. The first thing I noticed, which is actually something we talk about in, in our book, 
the tomatoes. There was a purpose behind that. Yeah. Tell me why you picked the tomato cutting. I think I know, but I just want you to spell it out. Oh, sorry. That, so, uh, it, it took me literally over 30 years of study to figure out what I just did <laughs> in those 10 minutes. Every, every, everything that, every, every line, like, I hear you is from hostage negotiate. Like, everything, everything. Yeah. It's all there. It's all there. It's, it's solely geared to not invoke a defensive posture. Uh, did you feel that you invoked a defensive posture at any point in that conversation? But with, with the exception of the fact that I asked you, name three people. Like, other than that, did you feel yeah. defensive? No, I, I thought there were so many lovely, comforting phrases. It was lovely. It was. It was genuine. Even though we were role playing, it was actually lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So the tomatoes. So the tomatoes. It didn't have to be tomatoes. It could be something. But it's a an activity that two people do together yeah. as a team. And so you're on the same team right from the get go, Brilliant. and you're situating the conversation within the framework of the team. Love it. Love and it. can I also add, you are maybe side by side, maybe facing opposite directions. There's no direct eye contact, which Correct. can be confrontational. A hundred percent. You're engaging with your body, which kind of re decreases your defenses. So there's a lot there that I thought There's was a great. lot for cutting the tomatoes. And yeah. so I'm not looking at her. You're creating camaraderie. There's yep. A, that yeah. again invo yeah. invokes a defensive posture. You want to avoid that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what what else? Uh, the dog. What else stood uh, out to, to either of you? Well, uh, I do this all the time. So Stella, what <laughs> Stella. Uh, stood out to you? What stood out to me was the um, the detransitioner's point. That was where the war is going to happen. If you follow me, once you say the word detransitioner, bang! The, you know the the dynamite gets lit. And so I, I was really interested you brought it up because a lot of people are, a lot of parents are afraid to. So I was really glad that you did, but I was, I was thoughtful that you did because I know how quickly, once you say deep transition, bang, you know what I mean? The, 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 the fight happens. But I yeah, mean, aside so, from the content, yeah. I also just want to talk about yeah. like the techniques, right? Because I mean, we okay, know sorry. the content very well, but let's just for parents who are watching, what are the techniques okay. I think that Peter used? Then we can come back to the detransition. Well, you, you pick them. <laughs> you go. You go ahead. Well, I mean, yeah. I noticed yeah. that you didn't try to de to argue with any of the points she was making, even if Correct. I'm sure on a, a visceral level oh, as a yeah. parent, you're like, "What do I'm you mean boy, you're literally a boy. a boy?" Like maybe yeah, your internal yeah, yeah. dialogue is saying that, yeah, but you were that, genuinely yeah. trying. Yeah. Keep going, people. Yeah, the, yeah, the reason for that is that that invokes the golden rule for this is to not invoke a defensive posture, okay. and it's obviously easier because stellar is not my literal daughter and mm -hmm. so it's easier so if you're in an actual situation and in the book how to have impossible conversations i talk about exactly how to do this um to to kind of keep yourself and your emotions in check every time those get out of check you're you're basically driving your daughter or son away from you and you're making the outcome more likely that you don't want to have happen so you have to orient that particular orientation, that particular engagement away from um, um, any any kind of adversarial component. And, and so the other thing is you want to take something from an emotional valence off of an emotional valence. And I thought of the gentrification thing because yeah. my daughter that other technique. studied. That was a good I, one. Yeah. So it can't, it has to be something that's not, not, either orthog orthogonal to it or something that's totally unrelated to it. And I had to take a position on gentrification that I, so this is the other thing that's so important about that. So my guess would be that we, we know the 93% of, of uh, teachers lean left and, and, and a high percentage of those lead strongly left. And I know from my daughter's classroom, she was only studying about why gentrification was bad. So I know that I had to say to you, well, 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 what if somebody is only learning that it's good and we know it's bad? So, so I had to frame it in a, without telling you what I was doing in a way that you would come to that conclusion yourself. But I couldn't do that if I said, well, what if 
somebody only thinks that it's like I had to take a Bad. very specific yeah, you had stance. to yeah yeah for sure that was you brilliant. had to reflect back your daughter's values on it so that she could Correct. think about her opponents like her opponents have only studied what's so great about gentrification, but you, wise one, you, you know, you're also kind of, I don't know if, if this is something I read in your book or I've been saying this for a while, but you, you want to speak to the highest values of the person you're talking to. So mm -hmm. like sometimes I encourage parents, you know, to say something like, I know you're really smart and you do a lot of research about stuff. That's So I wonder if ultra casting, can you define that? Say more. So this is a super highly controversial technique. Um, it's I almost didn't put it in the book. Uh, ma many people think it's it's uh, fraudulent or doesn't work or a dubious. Mm. Uh, I I would say uh, it. I mean, it's the closest thing to these are not the drones you're looking for that I've ever encountered. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm almost hesitant. Again, I was hesitant to put it in the book. We almost didn't put it in the book, but I have used this and I have seen this used un it's so efficient. It's just, I've seen it. I'm, I, when I, I first learned about it, I was like, holy shit. It was, uh, so all ultra cast. It's like, um, the other thing that I felt like that I only felt like that about one other thing, uh, Darren Brown's instant ad ad inductions. I don't know if you've seen those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I have a friend who's a master at instant inductions, but um, so it's you're casting somebody in a role that they then live up to. It's so right. easy to do, but so crazy once you see that it's done. So uh -huh. let me I actually uh, oddly enough, I actually yeah, it can be extremely manipulative. Yeah. That's why in the book we suggest that you alter cast. Um, you only alter cast for civil conversations because then once people figure out what alter casting is and get good at it, it's just it's just it will not have a salubrious effect on the society. Um, but, but yeah. you know, like when, when my, my, you know, quote unquote, speak of the devil about the gentrification issue, my daughter's teacher w w was teaching her about how evil gentrification was. And we went to this open PTA night or, or I can't remember what it was, something, something like that. And, uh, I went up to her and I said, you know, you, you really strike me as the kind of person who teaches both sides of the issue. That's all ultra casting is. You just cast them in a role <laughs> that they live to the role, and it's so it's so crazy how efficient that how yeah. how well that worked. I've I've ultra casted people. I can't. I don't. I'm even hesitant. To, I've ultra casted people when I've needed documents at public offices that they weren't allowed to give out. I just ultra casted them, and they gave me the document. I've ultra casted people in such crazy situations that I still can't believe it works. But anyway, huh. what you just suggested is, is a kind of ultra casting. There's other things that make ultra casting, you put it on steroids that I'm not gonna talk about. Um, okay. Because I just don't think it's a good thing for those techniques to be out there. I but only recommend for parents to do it in a way that's genuine and true. So like if your daughter isn't actually someone who likes to research, I don't tell them to say that. But I think about, I ask them to think about what are your children's yeah. most admirable Here's qualities and then speak to those. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. And maybe you should cut the whole ultra casting thing out. If oh, somebody God, starts, no, it's if somebody starts ultra casting their kid, but they don't have the rest of the infrastructure in place, the ultra casting is going to make the situation worse. So you need the infrastructure in place. Only if you have the techniques and the emotional detachment, can you use, or should you use ultra casting? So the problem is that people are just, they want easy, quick solutions, and they're just going to try to alter cast a solution or no. the, the problem. Yeah. Wait, no, that you're going to. If you start alter casting people, you're going to do exactly the opposite, which is the other reason that we didn't put it in the book. It's that there is an infrastructure and a way to do this, and there is no quick solution. The other thing is, if your son or daughter is thinking of actually mutilating their own genitals or having someone mutilate their genitals, this is as far from a joke as you can get. So. Your time investment in that, whatever else you're doing in your life with the possible exception of exercise or something you need for your mental and physical health, it's over. Like it's done. Like that's it. Like you have a new job right now and your new job is to learn about this and to protect your children's physical and mental well-being. And so forget about your theater, forget yeah. about your poker night, forget about all of it. It's that's you're a parent. You have a principal responsibility to your child. And so that's the other thing you can you spend time with your child 
you know, it's just like anything else. You know, the old studies about people who accepted gays or Muslims is if you knew someone who was a Muslim, if you knew someone. So the relationship bonds, that's how people, if you look at the literature on cult exiting, they stay in cults. The, the, it's because of the relationship bond. So yeah. you're, you're, you need to have a, and, and did you see almost everything I did in that interaction, I, you know, the, the, the listening, the active listening, the repeating back, that's Rappaport's yeah. rules. Like almost everything I did was to facilitate a healthy relationship because whether or not they will transition or not, almost invariably will not be research, although that might have something to do with it. We could talk about, the, that's problem, highly prob problematic because the, uh, the engines of knowledge production have been corrupted and totally. compromised. So you're going to go to, you know, peer reviewed journals, et cetera, to have evidence, quote unquote, evidence by deranged terrible, maniacs. Terrible, terrible literature. So, so, so you can't, you can't rely upon that, but the ultimately at the end of the day, it will be the relationship you have with your child. That will be the, 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 the primary influencer there. So, it's, is it about research? Yeah, it is, it is partially, but it's about developing that relationship. So that's also why I didn't mean to be cheeky about it, but, um, you know, I, I know I'm going to say this and nobody wants to hear it, but it's just, it's just true. You've got to get your fucking shit in order. Like, you can't be eating sugars. Like, you need a new, you, you've got to exercise. You've got to take care of yourself because you are in for the fucking battle yeah. of your life. And you cannot be fucking around. Any bullshit that you did oh i just want a piece of cake or what no fuck dude no like you have a very serious the the magnitude of the problem that you are facing cannot be underestimated and if you're smoking and if you've never had a chance to or you've never had a real reason to get your shit together you've always made an excuse you got to end that shit you got to start working out you got to start eating right you got to cut back on your sugars because you're going to need the mental health, the fortitude, and the resilience to, to, to deal with you crying every night. Your, I mean, these are ir irreversible damages, as Abigail Schreier says. And so you, you, you have yeah. to reprioritize and restructure your life. And I know everyone's like, well, you, know, you, you can do it unhealthily. You can just start getting drunk and eating cake all night and, and not working out and neglect your body. But that will make dealing with your child and engaging with your child infinitely more difficult than it would if you started taking care of yourself. Yeah. 100%. And the other thing is there's a, there's a secondary benefit, you know, in Freakonomics they write the number one or in, in the literature around this, you know, if you, if you want your child to read, don't read to them, have them see you read. If, if you don't want your child to smoke, don't tell them not to smoke, just don't smoke. I know. So, I you, know. You, you know, if, if you want your child to be more comfortable with their, their bodies, my recommendation is, and, and I know that I don't want to ride this hobby horse for too long, but I am absolutely convinced that one of the best things that people can do for their bodies is, do, is to do jiu-jitsu. There's a mm. great place in Dublin, uh, John Cavanaugh's place. He's a, he's, he's a buddy of mine. He's Conor McGregor's coach. Uh, his oh, coach's John coaches. Cavanaugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a, good, he's a buddy of mine. His coach's coach is Matt Thornton is one of my best friends. I just wrote the foreword to his book, The Gift of Violence, but... But putting your kid in jiu-jitsu, get him in the sense of the body. But not only that, you doing jiu-jitsu. So you have to be willing to go out of your comfort zone. But most importantly, and again, I understand, I'm acutely aware that you're going to shoot. People will shoot the messenger and people don't want to hear this. But it is a fact you have to start taking care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Because if you really want to address these problems, they're best done if, you've, if you're well slept, if you don't snap at your kid, if your diet is in order. It's just, you know, it's the famous triangle, diet exercise, sleep. But nobody wants I, to hear that. Well, can I just add, because it's the fight of their life, it's also the tragedy of their life and it's, it's the most vulnerable position ever. Give yourself time to get your shop in order. Get your shop in order. But you know what I mean? Because this can be such a, a like a, a, a truck has literally walloped into them. So there's a kind of a shock and then you've got yeah. to get it together. It is the fight yeah, of and, their life. It, and it and is here's, the, here, here's the tough love here. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Not I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stop drinking tomorrow. No. Not I'm gonna, not going to have a, pe a Pepsi. No. Get your shit together. Your daughter, your son is going to mutilate themselves. This is not a time to fuck around. Get your shit together. Take care of yourself. You have to be. You, 
you will be much less likely to snap at people. You'll be much less likely to create defensive relationships with people. You'll be much more likely to listen. You'll be much more likely to create circumstances in your life that you will be better able to deal with this. And the answer to that is not, oh, tomorrow I'll do it. No. The answer is you've got a serious fucking problem, and it's now. Yeah. That's my yeah. sincere, honest advice to everybody listening to this. Yeah. And what you're lifting up is like something we, we, we talk about a lot. You can't wait for someone else to come in and save your kid. You can't wait for the 100%. right therapist. You can't wait for the right school it's you. or the right friend. It's you. It's you. you. And, and you if have you to want be really this, proactive. you have to take responsibility for yourself. Yeah. yeah. There's just no, there's no savior. Jesus is not coming down to help you. You are going to help you. Yeah. yeah. And frankly, I mean, Peter, I don't know how many parents you talk to, but we talk to parents all the time who the ship has sailed. Their child maybe adopted this identity in college and the parents have done what they do have within their That's where they control. get it. But they need that self-sustaining behavior and habit for their own continuation. 100%. Because God knows what's going to happen 10 years down the line with their child or yeah. whatever. And so this 100%. happens regardless of whether they can intervene on the child's path. This is about the 100%. parent being a human, a sane human. It's devastating. Yeah. And, and I want to say one other thing. I, I want people to view this as an opportunity to... There's really no polite way to say it, or there is, but the to just get your shit to together. To say it, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. you just yeah. got to get your shit together. So this is an opportunity to also go out of your comfort zone. I mean, how much more out of your comfort zone can you be than your kid mutilating their own genitals? Under so you're already out of your comfort zone. Uh, yeah. So, I so, so d doing something that you wouldn't ordinarily do, and again, the reason that I recommend jujitsu is because you there, there's something about someone trying to choke you that you can't think about your problems. You have an immediate kind of, there's something about, you know, not like when you lift weights, you can quit at any time. But when someone's on you and they're trying to break your arm and you I'd have like to, to wait argue for the as someone who lifts, expire. when you have a barbell on your back and you're squatting, you can't just quit at any time. I mean, you, you have to uh, stay yeah, but pretty you, focused. You, but I, I hear what you're saying. You have a rack, two things. One, you have a rack. And the other thing is the total time that you can't quit, even if you don't have a squat rack. The seconds. total time that you yeah. can't quit is seconds. Yeah. Whereas if, if you're in a match, it's five minutes. Yeah. Like I had a guy on me yesterday. I have all these bruises and stuff, but I do it at a pretty high level. Uh, you know, I had a guy on me yesterday. I could not get this guy off of me. And I can assure you, I wasn't thinking about my friendships, my friends who have lost me, or I, you know, whoever. I, I wasn't thinking about any of that stuff. But, it, mm. but my point is not that people do jujitsu, but it, my, my point is that you have to be willing to go out of your comfort zone you have to be willing to do things you might ordinarily not do. Like, oh, I really want to, you know, go to Dungeons and Dragons yeah. one day a week. Okay, well, you got a more serious problem right now. Could I, could I take you up on that? I, I really agree with you, but I, I kind of almost thought, you'll probably kill me for this, but I almost thought metaphorically, but hold, hold, your, hold, your, hold your, your, your guns just for a moment. I, I, I was thinking of the, you know, the Winston Churchill line, which I've always loved, which is sometimes, you know, it's not enough to do your best. Sometimes you have to do what's required. And often when we're working with parents, myself and Sasha are talking about sometimes you're going to have to make really difficult decisions like move house, like they don't go to college, like they, you know what I mean? There's an actual very big physical decision that is going to Correct. absolutely upend your life. So that's what I was thinking of when you were saying jujitsu. I was like the big, hard, really mentally difficult decision that would be so exhausting and you really don't want to make very often that's sometimes what's required and in this scene sometimes it's something really big and really hard and we've seen parents do it i'm not saying that's always the solution but sometimes it's amazing how much pain a human will go through as they avoid taking the really hard decision yeah i i agree and on a personal note i've told my daughter uh you know, if you watch the confrontation at PSU video, which I'd, I'd recommend, if you could link to some of those videos, I think that they'd be oh, very well, helpful. Thanks. Um, if you watch that video, there's a, a, a these social workers come down from the rooftop, and this person explains that she's non-binary, and you know she learns all. This is a contagion. The whole thing is a contagion. Like she's learned about it in college. I told my daughter to not go to college. I told her to be an electrician. 
you know, don't go to college. That, you know, I'm steeped in academia. Like, that's my life. Like, yeah. books, learning, reading. And, 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 but I, you know, my daughter's gay and my son is gay. I have two kids. They're both gay. My daughter's adopted from China. And I've, you know, so my daughter in particular is more susceptible to this. Mm-hmm. My son, I'll, I wouldn't say immune to it, but vir- virtually immune to it. Uh, you know, TikTok is the other factor. You said the internet. It's not mere, merely the certain, yeah, there are yeah, certain yeah. Um, places, uh, venues that are, that are far worse, certain platforms that are far worse. But uh, so I, I think that, you know, you, you just have to kind of think, okay, so I had all these cherished sacred notions of what I wanted. Yeah. You know, like, wanted to send my kids totally. to this. And this. You really need to, this is another level. Like you really need to, everything has to be put on the chopping block for this. Like yeah. I, I know that's again, an uncomfortable truth. Uh, and again, I, I just want to be clear. I never thought that I would say something like this yeah, 15 years ago. Like I thought Same. homeschool would be terrible. I thought yeah. this yeah. whole thing, but yeah. I, I just, um, yeah, I, I've even, I've even thought about to be very, very blunt with you, you know, um, um, I love, I love Hungary. It's just like my happy place. I wanted to take my daughter there, put her in the, put put her in a school system and matriculate her in there. So she would be, uh, I don't think there's virtually any gender ideology in Hungarian schools, Eastern Europe in general. It's one of the last places on earth. It's everywhere. It's in India. I just wrote the afterward or the, yeah, the forward to Rajiv Maholter's oh, yeah. book about, yeah, it's in, it's everywhere. It's all over the world. Well, the first the detransitioner I ever met was from Hungary. She got, what's the word? She, she got lost online. This is the one. Remember Kale in my film? Mm-hmm. Sasha? Mm-hmm. She's from mm-hmm. Hungary. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, I digress, but you might have to just think out of the did box. You, did, in terms did, of you, did you, did um, you, I don't, I hope it's not rude to ask, did you no. tell your kid not to go to college? Because this is a big thing among a lot of the parents that they just I did. presume I, the kid has to go to college. It's like such a shock no. when I say, do they have to go? No, they don't. They, you know, I can't speak to, to your island over there, but in the United States, we have a serious shortage of um, people with trades and they yeah. make very, very good money. But my yeah. daughter is rather small, and I, I've been told by people, and I looked into it, that carpentry isn't good. And she's just she has a facility with like making building stuff. Um, but you no, they 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 don't have to go to college. Also, I'll, I'll I'll say that there are new institutions coming online that are that have no DEI offices, like the University of Austin, of which I'm Yay. a founding faculty fellow. Yeah. So there are new institutions coming online. Stephen Blackwood's Ralston College, yeah. other, other yeah. Uni- institutions and universities yeah. are coming online. So. If you're hell bent on putting them in in an institution, maybe you should think about those alternative institutions yeah. in which there's no gender ideology. Well, this this yeah. went in a direction we didn't expect, but we really appreciate not only your kind of like technical knowledge of all these conversational skills, but also just your reflections as a dad with two kids. Yeah, um, this is so huge, and it it really is like a game changing shift in our culture. So thank you so much for joining us, Peter. Oh, my, it was great to pleasure. talk with Thanks. you. Thank you. But, Thanks for for doing what you're doing, and you know sooner or later I'm sure you've experienced some of it. But the the more influential and successful you'll be, and the more people you'll reach, the more crazy people will seemingly come out of the woodwork. And I think in those situations, it's really important to understand that. I, I wouldn't say this is a unique cultural moment, but we tend to have a kind of cultural myopia, and to think mm-hmm. that the weirdness of this culture is either universal or it's going to. Re- I think that this is going to fade, and I I don't think that anybody's going to apologize to you. So don't hold your breath. I don't I don't no. even think you should expect it to be blunt with you. No. Um, but I appreciate your work. I appreciate you doing it. I guess my if I were to offer my unsolicited advice, it would be to, the the same thing that I said before. It's that you have to get your lives in order to deal, to develop a kind of grit and resilience to the onslaught. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Peter. Pleasure. Thank you. That was amazing. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for being part of our listener community. Your financial support helps to make all of this possible. For more ways to support the show, please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and comment on our episodes, and of course, spread the word about joining the paid community and all the exclusive content you can find there. And for more information, please visit widerlenspod.com.